Uh, I'm Steve Zottoli. I uh, work at the Marine Biological Lab in Woods Hole. Um, I've been coming here many summers. I'm retired from Williams College and uh, we're studying the fish in Eel Pond that come back uh, multiple summers and we're trying the new technology, the pop-up tags in combination with acoustic tags and we're doing that with eight fish today. So what we're, uh, what we're hoping to do here and I think what it, we have is a really great opportunity is to look at um, this kind of classic game fish but utilize the power of uh, the MBL and its focus on basic biological research to uh, investigate these animals not just in their uh, migration patterns, but look at a lot of the kind of uh, inherent underlying biological functions that uh, kind of program these fish to do these migrations. So um, their response to different environmental cues, their response to feeding, um, how their brain and their internal clock uh, function, their microbiome and how that might help us track animals from place to place depending on their specific microbiome related to their natal river systems and spawning areas. Um, and so by studying these animals here with access to all of the resources at MBL, we can kind of gather a, a much more broad story of these animals and kind of understand their biology, their behavior, their place in the kind of ecological scape um, by using a lot of the tools um, and kind of fundamental biological research that we have here at the lab. So why don't we go down and, and I can kind of set, set it up. We have a cooler with anesthetic in it. Um, we have a bucket of squid to chum the water to keep the fish interested in feeding. And then we lay a, a circle hook on the surface with a piece of squid on it. We filed off the barb and uh, we just lay that right on the surface and the fish are feeding anyway. They grab it. We pull it out as, quick as, quick as quickly as we can and we try to, um, to minimize the amount of stress on the fish by having a net under it immediately uh, and to put it in the cooler with anesthetic. So chum the water. Lay the hook on, take the fish out quickly, get it in the cooler. Oh, Scott, you're the man. Get that down. <laughs> so now we'll check to see if it's previously been tagged. Is there any tag on it, Brian? No tag. So that means it wasn't tagged this summer, but it still could have been tagged in the fall of 2021. So we have to check to see if it has an internal tag. So we're going to bring it back to the Marine Resources Center. Our goal is to put the tags in, as, as I described. But in addition, um, the Bay Paul Center representatives are here taking swab samples to look at the microbiome of a migrating fish. And they're taking samples of the mucus, mainly from the gills, the body, the anus. Uh, and they'll do that while the fish is uh, under anesthesia and I'm going to go up and put a hydrophone in to listen to see if it has an internal tag. So the internal tag gives off a signal every three minutes on average and that signal uh, can be picked up by a hydrophone and we'll do that right now up here. So everybody here has an assignment and uh, it makes it easy to do because everybody knows what they have to do. The fish is now anesthetized so I can uh, put a hydrophone in the water. Yeah, ready. And I'm just listening for the signal of an internal transmitter um, that may have been implanted. So they're taking uh, swabs for the microbiome. Would you like to do both? And we'll also, another study is to look at the blood so uh, our veterinarian, Lisa Abo, will take a, a puncture of the, the caudal vein to remove some blood. Taking swabs of, from both sides of the mucus on the body and the mucus on the gills. So we're looking to see if we, we can see the wounds. You know, if, it, if we implanted it back in 2021, we'd, we'd notice scars. So now we're taking a sample of blood. 
So the objective is to make a very small wound um, on the ventral surface. We're going to pump the anesthetic water um, through the mouth and over the gills in addition to ambient seawater, ambient temperature seawater to make sure the gills are oxygenated through the whole procedure. And the first step is going to be um, turning the fish ventral side up after we measure it and, and uh, to implant the acoustic tag. So the incision's been made and, and um, she's now taking a piece of muscle tissue that will save for, and freeze, put her in a minus 80 freezer. And so there's, this is a five year acoustic tag that will record temperature, depth, and now it'll suture the wound. So she's put three, three sutures in. And now, uh, now the fish is ready to put the uh, pop-up tag in. So we're gonna turn the fish so there's dorsal side up. And um, the technique we use for the pop-up tag is a harness system that was developed by Eric Gigli in uh, Gulf of Mexico. Basically, it's, it's putting a bolt through the fish. Um, we call it an anchor. To which the tag is attached. So these pop-up tags are, 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 have been programmed to release in 300 days with the objective that, that some of these fish will return to the pond and that the tag will pop up in the pond which will not only allow us to get the tag back, but we might also be able to tag the fish a second time. So I'm just gonna put a lock-up nut. Lock-up nut on it so it doesn't come off. These tags will measure um, temperature, depth, acceleration, and light level in order to calculate latitude and longitude. Once we're done with this, um, we'll, we'll take a picture of each side of the fish. And the reason for taking those pictures is that, as many fishers know, but we've shown as well, um, we can identify these fish by aberrations in their stripe patterns. So, so when the fish come back, we can identify them uh, using these pictures. And then the fish will be removed from the V-board and placed in a recovery tank. So we have a recovery tank over here ready. And then the fish, the fish are monitored um, until they regain their equilibrium and start respiring regularly. And response, will, and if they respond to a pinch as well, then we're ready to release them. So we'll bring them down to the dock and do that in a minute. Thanks, um, and thanks for being so interested in this project. Um, my name is Brian Prendergast. I'm a professor of psychology at the University of Chicago and I have been coming to the MBL for about six years now, uh, five years now, um, working with a uh, number of collaborators here, studying uh, migration uh, and seasonal and daily behavior of striped bass. We were initially interested in trying to understand a couple of questions. Is it the same fish that come back every year or just does a random aggregation of fish show up in the eel pond? And we, we answer that question pretty definitively. You know, about 70% of the same fish come back every year, and there's always a few new recruits that arrive. Um, but in the and we, what we, the way we answered that question was by using uh, acoustic telemetry. 
different. So we could identify individual signatures based on the acoustic transmitter. When the fish came back, something pretty remarkable happens. They come back to Eel Pond and they don't leave. They spend the entire summer here, and not just in the general area. Um, they spend the entire summer, as far as we can tell, in this pond. And that allowed us to, I, I like to call it, we, we really, we psychoanalyze these fish. I mean, we can understand what they're doing essentially 24-7. Um, our idea is to tag the same fish two years in a row and ask these questions that, I mean, people just haven't been able to ask. Does a fish travel the same migratory loop every year? I mean, there, there, are, there are studies that have looked at um, migratory routes and, and it's clear that fish don't always migrate the same um, paths every year or the same distance every year. They're um, examples of partial migration. But when we have migratory cycles of an individual fish to see whether it's consistent from year to year, I think it'd be really exciting, like a, a new insight into their behavior. There's a lot to learn. We have little pieces because we have to wait until the fish is within a few hundred meters of a, of a receiver to detect it. And, and as a result, um, we get piecemeal information that we can put together. But it's quite exciting. And so now, We'd like to move to, to do these studies uh, on fish that are migrating uh, outside the pond, but we believe that there's a large population that does just what these fish do. They, they remember the pond because there's food here, they come here and they spend the summer here, and then they migrate like any other fish. And, uh, and our belief is this occurs in many, many spots up and down the coast. So we have all these little pieces of information and we're hoping with the pop-up tags to put them together into a whole.